Stay, Grandma. Is there anything you would want to do if you turned young again? We were poor as a young couple and couldn't even get us a honeymoon trip, said Shozo Saito, apologizing to his wife, Ine. But she was fine, knowing just being able to talk to him nonchalantly like this was more than enough for her. The elderly couple headed towards an important apple tree, one they had planted together after they had gotten married to celebrate their wedding now 60 years ago. It had even split once during Typhoon Mirai. They had thought it was done for, but it miraculously survived. But more astonishing on this day was the appearance of a golden apple. Later that night, Shozo reflected on how they were so poor and busy, yet the woman he loved still remained by his side. He thought things like, I'm sure she must have a lot she wanted to do. She must have still wanted to wear her favorite clothes and go into town. But seeing his teary face in the mirror young yet again, he screamed out for his wife. Running into their room, he found his lovely woman the same way. The two blushed as he set her down the bed and told her, We're going on a honeymoon trip. During another evening, their granddaughter Mino came to visit, only to be flabbergasted meeting her youthful grandparents, losing her mind a little. She accepted things pretty quickly, telling her grandfather not to cut his hair as he looks good with it, even though his bangs kind of get in the way. On the way home, Mino mentions to her father giddily about her youthful grandparents, but of course he has no idea what she means. During a game of cricket, two elderly men discuss how they've missed seeing Shozo and Ine lately, with those two known as the lucky lovebirds. However, we hear elderly ladies scream at the handsome young Shozo as he sizes up the ball. We turn back a few days prior, where Shozo and his son Yoshiaki were arguing. Yoshiaki wanted his parents to move in with him, as the parents were getting older and more prone to injury. However, Shozo refused to budge, knowing their ancestors protected this land for hundreds of years. He understood where his son was coming from, but he wouldn't abandon this legacy. Ine apologized to her daughter-in-law Kaede for having to hear their husbands argue while they did the dishes. But Grandma Ine felt perfectly fine, as long as she could stay by her husband's side. Back to the present, Kaede came over to bring ingredients Ine had asked for only to be met with her father-in-law, kindly mentioning Ine is at a community center meeting right now, and now totally confused with this being the first time she's seeing Shozo young. Oh my god, she left the room because she wasn't expecting her father-in-law to be so handsome? This is getting a little spicy. Spicy enough that Ine has bad feelings all the way at the community center. Later, Yoshiaki had a bit of a headache, trying to comprehend the magic that had occurred to his parents. Now he knew what his daughter Mino meant when she said she was playing boyfriend and girlfriend with grandpa. She nervously explained to her father, I, I mean, unlike you, he's so kind. He got the vibe. It was truly heaven on earth, so... Mino then explained her secret technique, grandpa barrier, to which Shozo lovingly tells her she's getting too clingy. But Kaede scolds her, saying, granddaughter ex grandpa is forbidden even in fiction. With Yoshiaki's wife and daughter kind of fighting over Shozo, Ine tells him they need to talk later, with a slap. As they say their goodbyes for the evening, Ine pats her son's head, wondering if he's working too hard at work these days, which takes him back to his childhood, getting praised by his mother. At a meeting for the Intertown Sports Festival, Southtown meets, worried they'll lose the event. But upon seeing the absolutely jacked Shozo, they begin their praises of him, knowing he can lead them to victory. On the day of the festival, Northtown comes over to intimidate Southtown, knowing all the members from Southtown could barely participate with all their members above the age of 50. Northtown was counting their victory on Shota Igarashi, a second year in high school who's part of the soccer club, and Daiki, a high school third year and captain of the baseball team. However, with the arrival of the Saito couple, things got serious. During the first match, even with Shozo's help, Northtown was on the verge of losing. However, with Ine giving a cheer to her husband with pom-poms, he miraculously got amped and took a victory for Southtown, even if Ine got a little embarrassed. The next event is a three-legged baton race with the Igarashi brothers taking the lead, as they've been playing sports together for over 10 years. The two know each other's quirks more than anyone. Unfortunately for them, 
The moment the Saito couple gets the baton, having been together now for 70 years, Shozo can adjust his running perfectly to match his wife, and the two claim an easy victory, no matter what the event. The Saito couple crushes it and Southtown wins by a landslide. With Northtown losing, Grandpa Igarashi isn't so happy about the embarrassment his sons faced. He's spiteful that Shozo stole Ine from him 70 years ago, and now he's stolen his grandson's smiles. But then, Ine pays them a visit. She can't be around her husband right now since he's getting so much praise from his victory. He's surrounded. So, she decided to share lunch with the Igarashis. As they enjoyed lunch, Grandpa Igarashi noted his wife, who passed away three years ago, as self-centered for leaving their cute grandsons behind. Ine then remarks, looking at the two boys, it reminded her of him when he was young, and that time he'd confessed his feelings to her, which surprised the boys, now knowing why their grandfather was always picking a fight with Southtown. On another day, Grandpa Igarashi sent Shota to deliver something as thanks for the meal, but with Mino answering the door, the boy was completely flustered, handing over the bag. Inviting him inside, Shota sat completely unable to talk, with tea in hand. He had no idea Mino was related to that Saito couple. He knows Mino is super popular at school, and even though he's always had trouble communicating, she's always been cheerful with him. He's stunlocked being alone with a person all of their peers admire. He tries to get through this by fiddling with his phone, but it fails since she gets interested in what he's playing. Unbeknownst to them, Mino's mom and grandma had been spying, and Kaede is wondering what to do if her daughter gets a boyfriend and eventually married. However, Shozo is excited to have great-grandchildren. Conversing with Shozo, Shota finds him very kind, but somehow feels an immense pressure from Ine and Kaede. With the adults wanting to learn more about Shota, Mino praises him for being smart and good at sports. However, this only leads to Ine and Kaede nervously whispering, judging on whether or not he'd be a good match for Mino. Shozo tries to ask Shota if there's a girl he likes, only to get quickly stopped by his wife, who makes an excuse that there was a mosquito on his face. Shota then says his goodbyes for the evening, and as Mino walks back in the living room with her grandfather, she's a little saddened because she wanted to talk with Shota alone a little more, making Shozo nervous because now it's a secret only he knows. On another day, Mino is surprised to hear her grandmother was the one who confessed to Shozo first. They married for love, which was rare back then. Shozo then said he always yearned for Ine and told her he was overjoyed, but the times just wouldn't allow it. His father was a man of tradition. He intended Shozo to have an arranged marriage with the daughter of his good friend, because back then, the family a person was born into influenced a lot of things. At first, Shozo didn't do anything, until he had a huge fist fight with his father. For a while, he thought of eloping, but with Ine's support, they managed to overcome everything. Shozo remembered his wife to be so cool back then. She even called out the girl that his father introduced to him, with Ine telling her, I will never let you have my man. <laughs> well, she had someone she liked too, so the girl was kind enough to withdraw gracefully. Hearing all this, Mino decided to ask Ine if she could think of her as a love rival and reenact that moment. And this somehow put a sparkle around Shozo. So, Ine had no choice. She grabbed Mino's face and spoke those same words on that fateful encounter, making the granddaughter and grandfather gush over Ine. Aww, this is a cute and fun anime. I like how everyone just accepts that Shozo and Ine are young again without any real questioning, but maybe that's something we'll learn about later. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for next week's episode. For now though, watch this next video. It's me, Comfy T. I'll see you all in the next one.